recently. Over the last 10 years, we've witnessed many disasters, including tsunami, earthquake, fire, uh, wars, you name it, we have seen it. Not only these disruptions affect our lives, they also have major impact on the supply chains as well. Specifically, when a disruption occurs, it could affect the supply as well as the demand. For example, when the earthquake hits Taiwan, you're talking about 50% of the computer chips are at stake. Also, when SARS hits Asia, the major, there's also major changes in the demand of masks and thermometers. When a disruption occurs, how should this company react to it? But even further, how should the company prepare themselves before the next disruption occur? Put in other words, how can companies to make the supply chains more robust? That is resilience to disruptions. So based on my own observations that I've observed, some supply chains, they're more robust than others. Then the question is, what do they have in common? Based on my own observations, I've learned that most of these supply chains tend to implement one of the following strategies that will make them become more robust. The first strategy I called product strategy. The second one, supply strategy. And the third one, demand strategy. For each of these strategies, the goal is to enable a supply chain to reconfigure the products, the supply base, or the demand in a quickly and also an obtrusive manner. Let me give you a few examples about these strategies. The first one, I call it product strategy. In year 2000, a plant was caught on fire in New Mexico. And this plant is owned by Philips, who tend to supply the chips to Nokia and Ericsson. As it turned out, Nokia was, was able to reconfigure all the design of the phones because they had a modular designed architecture built in place. So as a result, they were, a they were able to quickly adapt the base model designs to accept chips from other Philips plants. As a result, they en enabled them to really continue to supply the phones to the markets without ma any major problems. The second strategy I call supply strategy. In this particular case, the largest trading company in Asia called Li and Fong, they were enabled to shift the supply base very quickly within the Asia region after the rupees in Indonesia devalued by 50%. Because Li and Fong has a supply network of 4,000 suppliers, they will enable them to reconfigure the supply base as needed. In the third example, in the demand strategy, when the earthquake hit Taiwan, 50% of the chips were destroyed. As a result, there was facing major shortage problems. But in this particular case, they, they were able to deploy a demand strategy. Specifically, they were able to change the pricing of the different uh, product configurations in a dynamic fashion. For example, they encourage free upgrades, free promotions of different products to entice the customers to switch the product preference from one product to another product. As a result, they're able to delight the customers without major problems. As we learn more about these uh, strategies, they will enable supply chains to become more robust. There are still more research questions I would like to pursue further. For example, how should the company classify and quantify this type of risk? Also, how should they go about selecting one of these strategies? Third, how much does it cost and what are the benefits of these strategies as well? I hope that I have more to report later on.